Hi, welcome back to the Guard Catering Kitchen. I'm Carolyn Johnson and I'm the events manager here at the Guard. Thank you so much for watching our first video when we showed you the great cookies that you could make using Guard leftover snacks. I'm going to do another demonstration today. Today I'm going to show you how to make blueberry scones. This recipe has nothing to do with the Guard, but this was a much requested recipe. People who watched my first silly video asked me then if I could demonstrate how I make scones. So I said I would come back because it's for the guard. I will come back and I will show you how to make blueberry scones. So let's begin. The first thing to know about this recipe is that it's really dependent on everything being really, really cold. And it's based on butter, as all good things are. So before you get started, what you're going to do is you're going to get a stick of butter and you're going to pop it in the freezer. You want it to be frozen solid. This is just regular old unsalted butter. And you are going to grab a grater. You're going to take this stick of butter and you're going to grate it into pieces. Now the reason for doing this is most recipes would just have you chop your butter into your dry ingredients. You can do it that way. But this is a trick that just gives you all these great little butter shards and they're cold and they're ready to go. And it's a real easy way to break this up into butter you can work with without having to stand there and chop it. So in any case, you're going to grate this stick all the way down until you have a stick of grated butter. And you then are going to take this and you're going to pop it back into the freezer so that it stays frozen until you actually get ready to mix it in. Now we're gonna combine our wet ingredients. And so we have half a cup of sour cream and half a cup of whole milk. And you are going to stir together to well combine your sour cream and your milk. Just wanna get those lumps of the sour cream out of here. And now you're all set. You're gonna take this and you're gonna put this back in the refrigerator. Again, cold is really important. Our butter is back in the freezer. We're gonna put this milk and sour cream mixture back in the refrigerator so that when we put everything together, it's all nice and cold. And now for the dry ingredients. Two cups of all-purpose unbleached flour. Um, when I post the recipe, you'll also see that I've told you how many ounces each of these ingredients is. I like to weigh when I bake, but again, you can measure it in cups. You can put it on your kitchen scale and weigh it up that way if you like. To your two cups of flour, you're gonna add a cup of regular granulated sugar. You're gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder and then just a quarter teaspoon each of regular table salt and baking soda. And you're gonna take these and you're gonna whisk these all together. Just till it looks like it's evenly mixed. Now an optional ingredient that I like to add at this point is a little bit of lemon zest. I like it against the blueberries. You can put in about a teaspoon of grated lemon zest. I don't even measure this. I just get sort of a small size lemon and I just grate it right into my dry ingredients. So just grate that lemon in there and give it another little stir so that all those little shards of lemon are distributed evenly through your dry ingredients. Now, into your dry ingredients, you're gonna throw the most important ingredient, which of course is the butter. So from the freezer, you bring back that stick of butter that you grated up and you drop it in with all of your dry ingredients. Here again, you wanna work really, really quickly. If you have warm hands, especially if you have a warm kitchen, because we don't want that butter melting. And all you're gonna do is you're going to use your fingers. You could use a fork, but your fingers really work the best. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fluff that together till all the little shards of butter feel like they've been coated with the flour and everything is nice and evenly mixed together. So now we're gonna take that milk mixture from the fridge and we're gonna pour it right on top of the dry ingredients. You're gonna work pretty quickly here. If your kitchen's as hot as this kitchen is, and you wanna move it along just so things stay as cold as they can. And you're gonna mix this together. 
You're just gonna mix it until it holds together. You don't wanna over mix it, you don't wanna toughen it. The longer you mix the flour and so forth, the more gluten you get and the tougher things get. So when this all comes together, now you're gonna turn this out onto a surface that you've added a little flour to. Right, you can go right on your kitchen counter, you can go right on a steel top table, right on your granite counter. Add some flour to your hands. And while you're there, add some flour to your rolling pin. And what you're gonna do is you just want to knead this really quickly, about five or six times. Again, you don't wanna develop a lot of gluten, you don't wanna toughen this. All you're looking for is this sort of come together into a little bit of a ball that's a little more cohesive. So just about six times around, not a hold together, it's still pretty sticky, no worries. Add a little more flour to it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll this out into an approximately a 12 inch square. Doesn't have to be perfectly square, that's just approximately the dimensions that you're looking for, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it some really, really nice layers. This is what makes a really flaky, flaky scone, is making sure that we have lots and lots of layers. So I roll it out so it's approximately square and about 12 inches. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in thirds. If it's at all sticky, get underneath with a spatula or a bench scraper fold it into itself about a third, and then fold it from the other side. It's kind of like folding a business letter. One onto it, and then take the two short sides, fold them up onto themselves. So you end up with this nice little packet that's about four inches square. Again, the dimensions don't matter so much. The important thing is that you just folded a whole bunch of layers into that. Now we're gonna take this, we're gonna put this in the freezer for about five or 10 minutes. So after about five, 10, 15 minutes, you now have this chunk of cold dough that you've taken back out of the freezer. Make sure that you have flour back on your surface because we're gonna roll it again. The butter's all nice and firm. Again, don't handle it too much. You don't want that butter to get all soft. You're gonna roll this out to be about 12 inches square. Notice it's a little easier rolling it this time because that butter now has frozen back up a little bit. The dough is just a little bit stiffer. It's not quite so sticky. And this time, try and get a little closer to that 12 inches. Doesn't have to be exact. Doesn't have to be exactly square. Now we're gonna take our blueberries. It's about a cup and a half of blueberries these also are frozen. Do not defrost them, don't drain them. You want these to go in frozen. If you started with fresh fruit, you still wanna do that same thing. Stick it in your freezer and get it really, really frozen solid. And you're gonna take these blueberries and you're gonna scatter them across the top of this. Notice a lot of them are gonna to wanna to roll around. That's fine, just corral them as best you can. Scatter them over the surface pretty evenly. Sometimes I spend a lot of time making sure they're all evenly spaced and that every little spot of dough has blueberries. It's pretty forgiving, don't worry. And once you have these scattered across the surface like this, you're just gonna wanna press down on them a little bit. Don't handle them a lot. You don't wanna get all warm in your fingers, but using either your hands or your rolling pin, you're just gonna wanna sort of embed them a little bit into the dough. I take my rolling pin, I just scrunch them down just a little bit. I try not to smash them, but I really wanna get them now so they're not gonna roll off. So once they are all embedded in there a bit, you're gonna pick the dough up. Again, working quickly, we wanna keep everything nice and nice and cold, and you're gonna roll it jelly roll style. And again, all we've done here is we've made more layers. We've made more layers. Get the ends. Now here's where you wanna measure a little bit. And here I measure it pretty carefully, only because I'm sort of obsessed with getting every scone to be, you know, pretty much the same size. So here what you wanna do is you want to take 
this roll. And now what you're gonna do, don't be afraid to add a little more flour to your hands. You're gonna pat it down. And what you're looking for is you're looking for sort of a flat rectangle now that is 12 inches by four inches. And again, the reason, oh, look at that, 12 inches. And here it's not quite four inches. So I'm gonna wanna give it a little pat to make it squish out a little bit this way. The reason here is that I want them to be the right thickness. So you don't have to worry about how thick it is. If you get the length and the width correct, 12 by four, pretty good there, ha, pretty good there. You now are all set to cut this into your wedges. Now, if this feels really, really sticky, no problem. You just toss this back in the freezer again, give it about five minutes and it'll be easy to cut. So mine stayed pretty nice and cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into pieces. This is gonna make 16 decent sized scones. If you want to, you can make eight huge scones. If you go with eight, they're gonna be those sort of really, really big ones that you see at Starbucks and places like that. I prefer to cut this into 16. So I go with a good sharp knife, cut it in half, cut it in quarters, and then each of those quarters gets cut into four. Use a sharp knife, because notice you're gonna be poking some of the blueberries at this point. If it's overly squishy, you know what to do. You're just gonna go and put this right back in the freezer. Okay, so there are our 16 scones. Mine's still really nice and cold at this point, so I decide I'm gonna bake them now. If you want to, you can put these back in your freezer. If you want to, you can put them in your refrigerator at this stage and bake them off tomorrow morning for breakfast. It'll keep overnight in your refrigerator. If you're gonna keep it longer than that, go ahead and just put some plastic wrap on it and put it back in your freezer. So this step you're gonna do just before you go ahead to put them into the oven. You have two tablespoons of unsalted butter, which you melted, I just do it in the microwave. And you brush a little bit on the top. You know, there's not enough butter in these already. Let's just put a little on the top. This kind of just makes them sort of nice and a little crusty on the top, which is nice. And then you're gonna sprinkle the top with about two tablespoons of sugar. There's not a lot of sugar in these. They're not overly sweet. This sugar though will make a nice little bit of a crust on the top and a little bit of a crunch. You can use two tablespoons of regular white granulated sugar. I like to use raw or demerara sugar. Um, it's just a little bit bigger crystal and it adds a nice little crunch to the top. You can leave this off, it's fine without. And then you're gonna pop these into your oven. <laughs> so you're gonna pop those into your 425 degree oven. They only take about 15 to 20 minutes to bake. After about 10 minutes, take a look. If your oven's like mine, you're gonna to wanna to flip that pan around so they brown evenly. And what you're looking for is you're looking for the top to be lightly brown, the bottom to be lightly brown. You will see a little butter seepage. You may see a little blueberry pop out now and again. All good. About 10 or 15 minutes in the baking. When they come out, let them cool on the pan for about five minutes or so before you try to remove them because they're pretty fragile right then. Then you're gonna put them out on a cooling rack, let them cool for maybe another five minutes or so before you break into them. So after 15 to 20 minutes, here's what you end up with. You can enjoy them as is. They're really great with a little whipped cream, a little clotted cream. Maybe in the comment section, I will add a quick little recipe for making homemade clotted cream. You can use your nice homemade strawberry jam with these, a good cup of tea. And of course, we highly suggest that now that you have your nice fresh scones, you pull up the list on our website of the Guard Virtual Cinema Choices. There are a lot of great movies on there right now, and you should pull one up and you should sit down with a nice cup of tea and a scone. I can highly recommend the movie The Surrogate, if you're looking for something a little serious, a little moral dilemma, or if you're looking for something that's just a lot of fun, pull up the Cat Fest film and watch that with your scones. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for watching this. And please, 
support the guard, check into our website to see what's going on, and we look forward to seeing you back here really soon.